David Draymond, shalom. How are you? Thank you for coming to our studio, frontman of Disturbed, of course. And this is your first time visiting Israel since October 7th, right? Since October 7th, yes. You wanted to come earlier, I understand. Been a little busy, unfortunately. Uh, or fortunately, mm -hmm. <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But yeah, I, I wanted to come as soon as I possibly could. Um, I've been meaning to come for a while. I've been meaning to visit uh, with my grandmother, with my family. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make it in time. She passed uh, just about a week and a half before I got here. Oh, we uh, share our condolences, of course. Appreciate that. And you came here and you visited also, you're here with your family as you, you also visited the, the gravesite of your grandmother and your grandfather. But you also went down south. I did. And you saw there what you already saw by, with pictures and videos on the web and on the media, but being there. Tell us about that feeling. Nightmarish. Um, I've been obsessed since this horror happened to our people. Um, every single bit of footage, every single bit of information, anything I could get my hands on, I've seen. Um, but seeing the destruction in person and hearing the accounts from the families and seeing the blood stains and seeing the bullet holes and seeing the charred walls and the remnants and the memories destroyed and lives wiped out. And yeah, memories just wiped out. Legacies wiped out. Families destroyed. It's heartbreaking. I, uh, I couldn't give enough of myself to them. I couldn't give them enough empathy and enough compassion. And it, it, it's, it's left a mark. I, I, I've, I've had nightmares every night since I visited. So it's, uh, it's just, hard to... Despite the nightmares, you're, I wouldn't say happy, but you're, you're, you're satisfied with the fact that you decided to go, despite course, all the nightmares. Of course, of course. It's, I, I think that all of us, as a people, as a nation... Um, need to do everything we can right now um, and provide as much of ourselves to those who need it as possible. I, I'm, you know, this, this trip was originally supposed to be one of uh, just family and, 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 uh, and, and just pure pleasure, but it became very, very uh, work-oriented in terms of uh, my activism and, and, and my uh, pro-Israel uh, support. Um, yeah. And, you know, today it feels like you, you, you defined it as pro-Israel. It's pro-truth. It's pro-good, right? It's pro-humanity. It's pro-decency. It's pro-morality. Um, the world has become bizarre a world to me. I, I don't recognize it anymore. I think the most shocking aspect of what October 7th showed all of us is that we can't count on our friends. And um, at least not... Not most of them, or the ones that we thought were our friends. Even the United States. You know, I think we need to be very careful. I think that the United States is our greatest ally. Mm -hmm. Has been, always will be. And I think we need to respect that and not mess with it. Um, unlike certain members of the current administration seem to have a habit of doing for the sake of trying to get some popularity points with their constituents and their base, which won't do Am Israel or Klal Israel or our cause or the war effort any good. You and saw Prime Minister Netanyahu's yeah, video? I did. I thought it was irresponsible, given the timing of things. It's not that I don't necessarily agree with the sentiment, but for the love of God, man, be a little bit more tactful. Um, with all due respect, I, I know he's done a lot of great things for this country as well, but that was not one of them. Now, as you, as you see these pictures, as you, not the pictures, as you see the scenes in the South, it's important for you that the world sees, right? Because you're seeing, especially as you're, as you're active online, and not only online, as you speak to other people, you understand that the world, what? Don't, don't know, don't understand, or just rather go with the lies? They're willfully ignorant, the vast majority of them. Um, even when faced with undeniable proof, they tried to refute it. They try to poke holes in it. They say it's AI generated. They say it's, you know, some, you know, Mossad plan or something like that. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible because 
Hamas and the civilian Palestinians who participated with Hamas on October 7th, I don't know that you can call them civilians anymore, even if they weren't official Hamas soldiers. If they ran through that gate, if they ransacked, if they pillaged, if they helped take hostages, if they also killed other innocent civilians, they're not civilians anymore. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what, what, what the answer to that whole equation is. I don't know how, when they spent so much time and effort to document their horrors, to document their crimes out of pride, out of bloodlust, out of, you know, this barbaric hatred that has transcended generations and that keeps getting taught to children from the day they're born and, and indoctrinated into this nightmare. Uh, they went to such great lengths to live stream it, to zoom it, to put it on every format, to put it on Facebook Live. We have the documentation that they themselves were proud enough to show the world to provide because they couldn't be any more, they couldn't be prouder than to be able to get on the phone and to tell their parents at home, hey, you know, I just killed a bunch of Jews. Well, now, th there's one thing those who deny the massacre, and that's lies that we can't even try to understand, but there's the world. There's the, the international pressure on Israel to stop the war. Yeah. And, you know, when the media on a global level is galvanized in such a way against us, um, when the only uh, imagery and the only narrative that are, is shared is that of the Palestinian narrative, um, the world is, you know, Joseph Goebbels never dreamed of the impact that social media and the modern day media have on the global mindset. It's incredible. I mean, it's, it's brainwashing on a massive global level. Um, and you don't have to be right. You don't have to be correct. You don't have to be accurate. You can even be wrong after the fact and correct yourself. It doesn't matter anymore because the lie travels around the world at the speed of light, 10 times faster than the truth. And those who are already so rapidly against us, who've been taught for generations that Jews are responsible for all the evil of this world, are only too eager to lap it all up. See, to, there's this horrific state of affairs where people who used to be a force for good have been completely you know, brainwashed. And what's good is bad now, as bad as good, nothing makes sense anymore, the world is upside down. Now, in your field, the field of music, we're also seeing singers, you know, performers that are talking out against Israel. And you, you want to answer them, you want to counter that. <sighs> you know. It's very, very easy to be um, sucked up into a trend. Uh, some of these uh, artists have been doing this for a long time, since way before October mm -hmm. 7th. Some of them only uh, joined the cause uh, seeing the devastation uh, that has been wrought in Gaza due to Hamas um, post-October 7th. And for those, I would say, I appreciate that you think that your heart is in the right place and that you think you're on the right side of history. But for there to be a real future for Jews or Palestinians or anyone in the region, this vicious cycle of indoctrinating the next generation to kill the next generation <laughs> has to stop. And it's only going to stop if the genocidal death cult that is in charge in the Gaza Strip is removed from power. Now, there are those who speak out against Israel, but there are many that are silent, that aren't speaking out, that are afraid, that want to be politically correct, and that also bothers you very much. It, it, it's, it's clutch time, you know. Jews have a very bad habit of thinking that if they just lay low, and pretend that nothing is happening, that the crisis will pass and everything will be fine. You know, that's happened since the beginning of time. It happened during the Exodus, for God's sake. Wow. There were Jews that didn't leave Egypt. There were Jews that 
stayed in Nazi Germany thinking they would never be one of the ones pulled onto the trains and taken to the camps. There are Jews in modern day society that think, well, if I just go ahead and I follow the narrative and I go ahead and I stay silent and I am one of the good Jews, I won't be lumped in with the rest of this hatred. And the sad reality of it is that people who blame Jews for every single crime in existence and every evil on this planet have been doing it for a long time and will continue doing it. And they don't care what side you're on. They care about the fact that you're a Jew. I understand that you recorded a very, very moving uh, version of Sound of Silence. Of course, we were familiar with your hit, the remake of... Uh, Sound of Silence. Tell us about that. We're not allowed to show it yet because it's not, not ready. Yet. It's not done. We could talk about it a bit. Uh, but Noah and the uh, the Hellscape Choir uh, here in Israel, um, some of whom are uh, family members or friends of many of the people who lost their lives at the Nova Festival, mm -hmm. um, they did an amazing uh, a cappella uh, musical rendition of the instrumentation for the song. And I sang along with them. Wow. And uh, we shot a video of it at the Nova uh, Festival site. And it was incredibly moving. It was very difficult to get through, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I, I think it's going to be something truly, truly poignant and truly amazing. Uh, the whole idea is to, show, to showcase the silence of the world post uh, the Nova Massacre. You know, I, I, it's incredible to me that here was a, 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 a music festival that, you know, is supposed to be an escape from horror, an escape from everything that is wrong with this world, and that they, they, they were attacked by everything that is wrong in this world and kidnapped and slaughtered by everything that is wrong in this the world. The sound of silence of the world. Post... 10-7, post the Nova Massacre, and uh, that silence is unforgivable. I'd like to end with a question I ask many visitors who come here since October 7th. On the one hand, you came here and you, you went down to the south and you're visiting and you're hearing the stories and it's very difficult. But let me guess that you're also here getting lots of strength and you're able to even breathe differently than when you're seeing everything from afar, right? It's helpful. It really has been. It's been very cathartic. Um, the whole thing, I, I, I needed it. I needed to do it. Um, I, there's such an enduring sense of helplessness that all Jews, I think, all over the world after 10-7 are feeling. And to come back here and to remember why we have our home and why it's so important, and the role that it plays in the modern era, and that we are no longer Jews with trembling knees, is incredibly important. And a feeling of family also. Absolutely. Community, family, unity, and perseverance in the middle of adversity. That is Israeli. That is Jewish. And that is a beautiful thing to bear witness to. Last but not least, you're, you're, you're out there on stage. Everyone knows you're Jewish. Everyone no, knows that you're pro-Israel. How is that? How do you deal with that? It's a difficult thing. It's difficult for me. It's difficult for my bandmates who are, have been so uh, supportive and understanding. And I, I, th I thank them from the bottom of my heart. I know it's not easy having a guy like me. Um, I'm a haunted guy. And... Uh, it would probably be a lot easier if I were just vanilla and I shied away from stuff like this, but I just can't. It also comes with the genre of music, right? I mean, you're, about, you're all about in your face. So it, if the music is in your face, the truth will also it, be yeah, but spoken, no? It, one would think, but the music we've always let speak on its own. Mm -hmm. that's, that was, that's always been the difference. And... Um, I don't think I have the luxury anymore of removing myself from the equation. I'm in it. So uh, I'll try to do it as responsibly as I can with as much decency and dignity as I can. Um, 
I know there was a big hubbub just the other day because I posted a, a picture of myself uh, when I was visiting with some of the IDF troops in the south. Uh, I signed a, uh, a tank shell mm -hmm. and everybody out there is losing their minds thinking like, oh, I'm condoning or I'm, that mortar shell or that tank shell is going to go slaughter innocents or slaughter, you know, women and children and, you know, <laughs> of course, that's the stereotype that everybody in the world who is against us wants to reinforce. When we don't target civilians, when we don't want civilian casualties, when we have the lowest civilian to combatant ratio in modern history, mm -hmm. if you actually look up the data online, if you talk to people like John Spencer and a bunch of others who are experts in the field. Um, but the truth doesn't matter. The narrative is more powerful. I don't want any children to die. Not ours, not theirs, but the murderers and the maniacs who perpetuated this horrific crime and who continue to hold the Palestinian people as well as our people hostage to a crazy indoctrination of hatred that happens generation after generation has to be stopped. Hamas is responsible for every single death everyone. They hide behind their people. Yahya Sinwar has said over and over again, he wants more and more of his people dead. He uses them as pawns. It's working on a global level. He knows it. We have to not fall for it. We have to be as careful as possible and do our diligence to the largest extent we can. And we have to end Hamas. We have to give a future for this region to the people of this region. It's been war going on for far too long. David Draymond, thank you very much for coming to the studio. Thank you for coming to Israel, and thank you for everything that you're doing. Good luck. My pleasure. I'm Yisrael Chai.